Hello and welcome to part 4 of our tutorial about the text tool. In this tutorial we're going to talk about the tabs tab, the rendering tab and the library tab. Let's start with the tabs tab. On the first glance you only see a couple of position and alignment sliders but these actually allow us to use tabs to align different parts of our text. So for example if we are talking about a credit roll like in this case, you will see that I have tabs here separating the individual text parts. And I also see in this case three tab separators I can modify directly on screen. Not only can they be moved around, but I can also, by clicking on the tabs, define if it should be left aligned, right aligned or center aligned. I can also adjust this by going directly into the tabs tab and then checking for my first, second, third tab here and adjust the alignment. As we learned before in the layout tab alignment. So let's add some text here and by default the tab key on your keyboard is used in Fusion to advance to the next control. So this is why we can't use it in the styled text input to actually insert tabs. To do that, you can either hold down your Alt key and type 009 on your keypad to get an additional tab. Or you can, of course, mark it and copy it and paste it, like so. Or you can go to your existing text file copy that and paste it in here then move your text like this. So this can be used for example to you know animate your credit roll to fine-tune the way the names are aligned etc etc. The next tab I wanted to talk about is the shading tab. So let's go with our standard text again here like so well I just said shading tab of course I meant library tab because we already talked about the shading in the library you can actually store and retrieve pre-built shadings like for example the weave glow shading here you will see a couple of buttons put get and shading and delete if you select one of the shadings and click on the shading button, only the actual shading, only the actual settings of the shading tab and of the text tab will be applied to the text. If you select the shading and click on the get button, all the attributes will be assigned to your text plus tool. That is image size, the actual text that's written in the style text which of course you can change but that's the big difference between those two buttons in the library shading only applies the actual shading and get applies all settings to your current text plus tool well of course you can create your own shadings as well so let's for example go in our shading tab here and define the color of the backdrop here to be something bluish. Let's keep all the other settings as they are. Play that back. And then in our library tab click on put which will now allow me to enter a new shading name like blue weave. Okay. And there we go with our newly defined shading. Of course the delete button allows me to delete the shading again. The next tab I want to talk about is the rendering tab and you see in this case I use the plasma tool and set my text shading to be actually based on an image. So in my rendering tab I can now define how the image shading sampling is applied. By default this is set to pixel. I can also switch to area mode. So if you have slightly more complex things going on like you know strong perspective etc. Switching to area sampling will give you slightly better results but will render longer. 
none won't do any sampling at all. So you can see actually a little difference here between none and pixel. The next option defines how the image shading edges are treated. So in that case, let me just add a transform tool in between the plasma and the text plus and move my mapping around here. So by default in the text tool, this is set to wrap. And you can see at this line that the mapping is actually wrapped around when I move it out of the screen. In black mode, as you might expect, when I move my mapping out of the screen, the text turns black. And in duplicate mode, which is basically the same as in the actual transform tool, the mapping is just replicated by the end pixels of the incoming mapping here. So you can use that, for example with the plasma tool like here, to create quite interesting effects. Then you will see the option to sort your shading elements by priority and by depth. To explain that, let me take another text plus tool here. So right now the shading elements are sorted by priority. If I go into my shading tab, you will see I have two of those shader active and shader number two has a priority of seven, whereas shader number one has a priority of eight, so it is in the front. If I change that, you will see that the shader 2 element pops into the foreground. However, whatever I do to my offset Z here, shading element 2 will stay in the background if I define it via the priority slider. If I go to my rendering tab again and switch it to by depth, then the actual Z position will define where my shading element goes. So back into my shading, now it actually doesn't matter how I set my priority, but it does matter how I set my offset Z. Then we have the option to clip characters behind the camera, which is interesting when you do complex Z moves, so that again saves render time. You can also set your anti-aliasing, which defaults to 32. So see there's quite a difference in your text, or 32 is actually sufficient. You can render your animated text to a flash file, and if you have, for example, a velocity board installed, you can render it to a DPS velocity file, either as a still, a roll, or a crawl. This concludes our last tutorial about the Text Plus tool. Thanks for your time, and stay tuned for more.